Lock yourself in a studio 24-7 for 10 years, make music, learn how to produce music, which is way, 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 way more complicated than DJing. Hey guys, welcome to the studio. I haven't done in a very long while any kind of DJ content here on this channel. It's mostly about my life as a DJ and producer, but due to the virus crisis, there is not much DJing happening. The few nice gigs and festivals I had planned for this summer all got canceled. So for me personally, the smartest thing is concentrating on producing music, because that's actually what makes you like step forward in the DJ world the most nowadays. I think the days of only being a DJ is only possible like to a local extent, maybe your hometown and some surrounding like cities. But if you want to tour internationally, there is almost no possibility without producing music, releasing it, building a fan base up this way and then slowly but steady advance. And today I wanted to make something beginner friendly and kind of answer like questions that I get a lot about DJing. A lot of people ask me if uh, they're too old to DJ. Definitely no, you can start whenever. It's actually not that complicated. The next question I get a lot is if you need to be musically trained or what kind of skills do you need as a DJ? And also here, especially with modern equipment, your skill level, I don't want to say is zero or it doesn't, there doesn't need to be any skill level, but I think riding a skateboard is more complicated. So the basics are really, really not that hard to learn. You have two songs that have a separate tempo. Sometimes by chance, they're already the same. But you have like two songs that have a beat, usually four to the floor. And back in the days with vinyl, yes, the skill level was like a hundred times, like it was a hundred times harder to learn it because the, the platter was spinning at different rates. So even if you match two songs, after a while they would drift again because the platters wouldn't spin perfectly. And you had no BPM counters. The, the new equipment and basically everything you can buy nowadays has a built-in BPM counter. So if one song has 125 BPMs and the other one has 124, you increase the speed by 0.8% and they're both at 125 and you can like put them on top of each other. A lot of people ask me if they need to be musically trained and the, the simple answer would be absolutely no, you don't have to be musically trained. If you can clap to a beat and stay focused and clap on the beat without missing it, that's all you need to, to be able to do. That's really it. And as you know, sometimes we have like DJ courses here in the studio due to the virus, also not really a lot, but I, I experience a lot like people starting DJing for the very first time and people that are musically trained, that played an instrument, even if it was just like half a year, they advance twice as fast, at least because I don't have to explain them how to stay in rhythm. Their hearing is trained, they have a better feel for rhythm, they stay locked into the beat a lot better. But even the ones that aren't musically trained, and sometimes we even have people in here that are like 50 plus, they still are usually able, with the new equipment, to learn it within a couple of hours, like making their first easy transitions. And if you know the basic transition, you could, in theory, play an entire night in front of an audience. The bigger problem is then just not being nervous. That's also a skill part you need to learn to stay calm and cool and relax and like be knowledgeable enough about DJing to not stress out and not to mess up, or even if you mess up, how to actually rescue it. But in general, the basic principles, I can teach any person within four to 10 hours, no problem. And then it's just about training, 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 training to be like really consistent and beat matching, starting to use effects, play around a little, loop some stuff up, know which song to mix into what kind of song. That's something that then comes with experience. The more you DJ at home, the more you DJ and start DJing in front of people, the more you will learn what the crowd actually likes during which kind of situations. If you're a wedding DJ, there are certain songs that just work perfectly to certain times. 
And if you're a club DJ, like the, the, the banger should be played like in the middle of the set. You should build up to it and then like usually the end a little shorter than than the ramp up to the to the main part. Do you have to to play like an instrument being able to know what chords are and stuff like that? Actually not. It helps if if you have like at least a basic hearing, if you can hear of a chord and another chord, two songs and different keys if they clash. And usually most songs for DJing are with intros and outros that usually just have like drums and beats in, in them so there isn't any clash even possible of melodic parts and i'd say 80 percent of all djs don't follow any mixing in key they just mix intro over outro and are just fine because they're playing songs that were made for djing but if you want to take it to the next level of course you can start mixing in key and this way have way longer transitions. If you're interested in mixing or how to mix in key, I made a full video, I'll link it up there. And then equipment wise, you need two media players. Sometimes they all come in one controller. You need a mixer to be able to mix between them. And then your source, your music on a USB stick or hard drive, and that's basically it. If you want to DJ with vinyl, poof. I wouldn't recommend it because it's frustrating. Back in the days when I started, there was no alternative. I was training every day for two, three hours just not to lose the skill and be able to do it really fast. And you had like to push the record every couple of seconds to keep it in sync with the new stuff. That's not really needed. Training, I mean, once you know how to do it, that's basically it. And then again, the key to actually like getting gigs is being connected, talking to the right people, being active, going outside, talk to club managers, other DJs. And if you want to be on the main stage, then uh, as I said in the beginning, there's just, just one possibility. Lock yourself in a studio 24 seven for 10 years, make music, learn how to produce music, which is way, 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 way more complicated than DJing. Have every month doubts about continuing, not continuing, making songs that are shit, thinking they're hits, then again that they're shit again, and all of that for a very long time. And maybe, maybe, maybe you make it like a small, small hit and you start touring a little bit. That's basically my life in a nutshell. But yeah, it's fun. I love it. I can't complain. So... If you're interested in DJing, I think music production is very much linked to it. So maybe give it a try. So if you're interested in any kind of music production stuff, this channel um, might be able to tell you one or two things. And if you're interested to see me reconstructing the studio upstairs, where also the DJ equipment is, tomorrow it's like the first day of deconstructing it a little bit to prepare it for construction. Anyways, thanks all for watching. See you tomorrow again. Sign up. So would you follow me?